given f of x equals x to the 6. You could be asked to find f of 2, which is something I would expect anybody who understands function notation uh, would be able to figure out that that is 64. But you could also be asked find x such that f of x equals 80. Now that's a little more involved because now we're looking for the x that makes that possible. So what do we do? We're looking for x such that x to the 6 is 80. So we're solving this. And this is where we note that if you have a function that says x squared equals 4, how do you solve it? You square root, right? But because you're taking an even root, you have to write plus or minus, right? And why do you do a square root? Because you're going to do a one-half power. Why are we doing a one-half power? Because 2 times one-half, right? A power to a power is the product of the powers is x. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that to get rid of a 6 power, you have to take a 6 root. Or you have to raise both sides to the reciprocal power, which is 1 6. So we're going to do 80 to the 1 6. However, because this is an even root, we're going to write plus or minus. So our answer will be whatever that is. Um, using a calculator to estimate it, we can say that it is plus or minus 2.075. So reciprocal power, important. Okay, how do you get rid of a any rational power? You multiply by its reciprocal power. Let's do another one. If I say given f of x equals 3x to the 4 fifths, now this isn't quite a power function because there's a there's something in front, but it really is. It's a translation on a power function, right? It has this coefficient, but the critical element is still there. We have x raised to raised to a power. So if I ask you to find f of any value, that shouldn't be hard. f of 32. You shouldn't need a calculator for this. You go 32 to the 4 fifths. Let's see. That is the fifth root of 32 to the fourth power. What's the fifth root of 32? It's 2. So taking that to the fourth power is 16 times 3 is 48. Why am I not putting a plus or minus? Because this is a, well, because first of all, the Radical was already part of the problem. If I introduce a radical, then I'm responsible for putting a plus or minus when appropriate. So this radical, this one-fifth power, was already present. So I'm not responsible for, I didn't introduce the radical, I don't have to put a plus or minus. But the second reason is even if I put that radical there, if it wasn't already part of the problem, this has an odd index. And when I do an odd index radical, I don't have to worry about plus or minusing on it. Uh, let's look at a different one. Find x such that um, f of x equals, actually let me just do 48. Again, of course we just did it a second ago, but let's say we didn't. So we didn't already uh, know that the answer is 32. How would we find it? Well, the problem was f of x equals 3x to the 4 fifths. And so the very first thing we do is we would divide by 3, divide by 3. Those would cancel. We got x to the 4 fifths equals 16. 
and then we to get rid of a four-fifths power we raise both sides to the five-fourths power so I raise that side to the five-fourths and I raise 16 to the five-fourths as well um, however the four being on the bottom means I have a even indexed radical there this is really the equivalent of 16, the fourth root of that, to the fifth power. So anytime you take an even indexed root, anytime the denominator is even, when you do it, you have to add a plus or minus here. You get what I'm saying there? Up here, first of all, it was an odd root, but secondly, it was already part of the problem. All right, down here, there wasn't any fourth root that was part of this problem. There was a fifth root, and I'm trying to undo it. It was a four-fifths power. So to undo that, I do the five-fourths power. I'm bringing this into play, and because I am bringing into play a fourth root, I have to write plus or minus. So what's the fourth root of 16? 2. 2 to the fifth is 32. So my answers are plus or minus 32. So negative 32 or positive 32. All right. Any others I want to do here? Um, yeah, I'll just make up one more. If I had f of x equals 3x to the 2 thirds. No, I don't want 2 thirds. I want three halves. Three halves minus five. And I ask you to find something. Um, find f of four. Your answer would be you plug in four. You take that to the three halves. How do we do? We'd have to do this. We don't do 12, right? We don't go three times four we do the square root of 4 cubed. Now I'm taking a square root here. Do I have to write plus or minus? My answer is no, because that was already in there. It's not something I'm introducing to solve. Right? I'm not looking for two solutions to this. I'm looking for this result. So I'm just taking it as it is. So I'm just looking for the principal root here principal root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. So I have 3 times 8 minus 5. That's 24 minus 5 is 19. All right. However, if I, this is my given, and I, this was fine, this. If I gave you a part B and I said, um, find x such that uh, f of x equals 19. Well, we know that's at least one of the answers. Is there another? Well, how do we find out? We do this. Adding 5 to both sides gives us this. Dividing by 3 gives us 8. And then raising both sides to the two-thirds power, do I have to add a plus or minus? And the answer is, I do not. Why? Because that's odd. When the denominator's odd, we have an odd radical. It is, we're asking what the cube root of 8 is, and we're squaring it. It's only when we have an even uh, index radical that we have to do the plus or minus. And it's only when we bring that radical into play, not when it's already part of the problem. All right, so uh, cube root of 8 is uh, 2, and then I'm squaring that, so I get 4. So there you go. And that is it for this first video. Thank you.
Wrong one. 